Thank you for coming. This is going to be the last presentation in this room for today. I'd like to introduce you. Uh, on the right we have, or I guess that's, sorry, my bad. On the left we have a Ryan Garrell, we've got Will Blanchard, Sydney Mace, and then, uh, sorry, Nick Vesa. And then they are going to be presenting to you the project management and support for the JMU Collegiate Win competition. Take, away to, take it away, guys. Hello, all. Thank you for coming today. My name is Ryan Garrell. I'm Will Blanchard. Sydney Mace. Nick Vesa. And we're the project managers for Jamie's Collegiate Wind Competition Team. Global energy consumption is dominated by oil, coal, and natural gas. The problem is that it is non-renewable, it, uh, it's a limited resource on the planet, and it releases pollutants into the atmosphere and water systems that, ha that harm the environment. The solution is to look uh, at renewable and clean sources, such as solar, wind, and others. The U.S. has taken steps since the 1970s uh, to find new ways to generate clean energy. Um, wind energy in particular has seen a compounded annual growth of 23.5% within the last decade. Some of the economic benefits that come from wind energy is that it is a lower cost per kilowatt hour, about two to six cents per kilowatt hour, and it is uh, a domestic source of energy, meaning there's no need to import from other countries such as getting oil from Saudi Arabia. The U.S. Department of Energy was created in 1977 uh, to, and their mission is to maintain America's energy and environment security. One of, their main, one of their many jobs is to create educational programs. One in particular is the Collegiate Wind Competition. The Collegiate Wind Competition, or CWC, was uh, created in 2014 by the DOE in collaboration with the National Renewable Energy Laboratory. It challenges interdisciplinary collegiate teams to find a unique solution to a complex wind energy project. It promotes leadership, teamwork, and creativity, and introduces and engages these students in, into the wind industry. Where does JMU's involvement come from in this? Well, the, uh, the program here is the ISAT program. And within the ISAT program, there's a, a specific sector tailored toward energy. Uh, so when the department caught wind, no pun intended, of the collegiate wind competition. They applied in 2014, competed, uh, and placed fifth overall. This year, in the 2018 collegiate wind competition, it will be held in Chicago, Illinois, with over 12 teams participating. With, with, sorry, just 12 teams participating. Uh, the collegiate wind competition will consist of three main deliverables. This include a business plan, a small-scale wind turbine, and a proposal for a hypothetical uh, wind farm site. The business plan is crafted for market research and will ultimately shape the design and development of the final wind turbine product. The small scale wind turbine is tested in the collegiate wind competition's uh, wind tunnel and will be expected to undergo uh, certain tasks and it will be based and the score will be based on that performance. The hypothetical wind farm site is a 100 megawatt wind farm uh, proposal that will take place um, somewhere within a 100 mile radius of the Jamie Institution. Now I know what you're thinking. What is our role in this? What is our role in the competition? Our role is as the PMO. So what is a PMO? Something that we really had to ask ourselves throughout the um, time when we were considering what we wanted to get out of our capstone experience. Um, PMO stands for Project Management Officer. Their main job is to facilitate, decision make. Um, they also oversee a lot of the processes as well as doing the majority of the documentation. Um, as PMO for our team, we essentially acted as the glue. So our team is uh, made up of one large team and then broken down into sub teams to complete the multi, like all of the um, deliverables that are requested of us from the Department of Energy. Um, we, uh, and to, to be good PMOs, we implemented, um, we had, we, uh, we put in, uh, uh, I'm sorry. I had this too, and I'm just getting a little nervous. Um, we implemented every uh, one of the PMOs to be on one of the capstone te or one of the sub deliverable teams. Um, so everybody was covering the, all of the deliverable teams. Um, we also con conducted town hall meetings weekly, which to talk about what all of the sub teams were doing, as well as um, as well as. Um, telling what the Department of Energy was doing. So we really, um, we really were the connecting piece between the DOE and the, um, the rest of our team because we sat in bi-monthly calls, which were, um, which 
where we sat in with the 12 teams online to talk about the um, to talk about where the status of the 12 teams were, as well as the um, as well as any updated rules or regulations um, that may have been changed by the Department of Energy. So the figure behind us is a um, for you to make it a little more clear. Um, during our capstone project, a lot of deliverables were being worked on throughout each phase. So we broke it up into four phases for clarification purposes. Um, phase one, the preliminary research. Uh, this was when we primarily um, did a lot of our initial research. This was over the summer. Um, phase two is the fall semester. Phase three was the spring semester. And phase four was going to be completed in May at the collegiate win competition. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about phase one. Um, phase one, we, if you want to, thank you. Uh, so phase one is our initial research. This is when we originally started looking into what a turbine is, um, the components of a wind turbine, uh, the how they work. The, we even looked into the business aspects, such as the market and the industry and siting. Um, we also reviewed past CWC documentation, such as the technical and design report. Um, reports previously submitted as well as past rules and regulations. But most importantly, we looked into the 2018 rules and regulations um, to ensure that we were well knowledge, we were, we had both, we had not good knowledge to be the best PMOs we could be. So um, another one, uh, some big task for us over the summer was the uh, team, was team recruitment. Um, so we sent out a lot of emails, flyers, uh, had a big presence on social media trying to reach out to find the best team that we could find. Uh, we also have to give a huge shout out to our faculty who, um, who really had a big part in choosing um, exemplary, exemplary students to, um, to show their skills in their specific majors. Um, we eventually can, uh, formed a team of 30 students. Uh, from different majors, uh, and they were required to join the ISAT and Engineering 480 class. So over the summer, it wasn't all work. We had some fun, too. Um, we visited Roger Beal's house, which he was very nice. He's our external advisor to let us come down to his see his 5 kilowatt, 100 foot tall um, wind turbine. Um, here it is right here. Um, it was a really great experience. We got to learn about um, all of his components of how he <laughs> how he uh, made his wind turbine and how to achieve maximum power. Um, another really great um, opportunity that we got to participate in was the Floyd Energy Festival located in Floyd County. Um, we went as um, volunteers for the Center for Wind Energy. Um, we we um, went there to talk about residential solar and wind. Um, and also talk about to the residents about possible reap uh, possible reap grant available to agricultural producers and small business owners. Last but not least, we got to participate in Kidwin activities, which was really awesome because we worked with middle <coughs> and high school students um, to uh, teach them about the wind industry, how wind works, um, as well as watch them build their own turbine, which was really a really cool experience. So with the end of phase one, we began phase two. And this really encompassed the uh, uh, activities for the fall 2017 semester. Uh, it really was the start of our efforts of the Jamie team as a whole. Uh, students wanting to participate in the collegiate win competition needed to enroll in the ISAT Engineering 480 course. Uh, this was the first of two courses crafted by our faculty to really give us a baseline knowledge of um, renewable energy systems, sustainable energy development, uh, and business concept developments. With all of these tools, uh, it will make us an effective uh, team uh, in entering the uh, collegiate win competition. Uh, with this information, the team uh, could then start development of business concepts and uh, wind turbine design process. Um, but first, the team needed to create and agree upon an organizational structure. Um, the PMO used the beginning of several ISAT Engineering 480 courses to discuss the um, team's organizational structure and to get feedback from the class about um, general structure and team roles. And the final team structure was decided a few weeks before the end of the, the fall semester. And um, the team was split into two, major cat two main categories, the deliverable teams and support teams. And a deliverable team is a team whose uh, duties are specifically related to a deliverable um, taken directly from the rules and regulations document. 
And these deliverable teams are the business plan, market research, technical design, engineering, and siting teams. Um, the business plan team is responsible for formulating and finalizing the business uh, plan document involving everything from the business concept and operations to the financial analysis. The market research team um, pretty much has the same deliverables as the business plan team, but their main focus is understanding the market that the business plan um, is going to enter. The technical design team is responsible for writing the technical design portion of the written report for the competition, and this report will include a description of the um, market turbine that was chosen for the business plan, a uh, description of the test turbine, and a justification of the differences between the two turbines. And the engineering team is responsible for designing, building, and testing a turbine that follows the restrictions um, stated in the rules and regulations document. And this team, as seen here, is split into two teams, um, the rotors team and the electronics and controls. And then lastly, the siting team, is responsible for siting a wind farm within 100 miles of JMU and presenting their work at um, the competition. And there will also be a siting challenge that's at the competition uh, where the team will be tasked to site another uh, 100 megawatt wind farm. Um, the other category of teams is known as the support teams. The support teams uh, ensure that everything goes smoothly throughout this whole process. They do not have a deliverable that is specifically stated in the rules and regulations document, but that doesn't mean that they're, the work that they have done has um, gone unnoticed. These teams um, really, really provide uh, a lot of support to the deliverable teams and help us in the process of getting to Chicago. Um, these teams include training and logistics, branding and media, rules and regulations and safety, outreach and engagement, and budget and financing. And then here you can see um, a diagram of the organizational structure. And like I said before, there were the two main categories that the teams were split into. So there was the competition deliverable teams over here, and then the support teams over there on the right. And then all of these teams were overseen by the PMO team that can be seen above. So as said before, one of the main deliverables of the collegiate win competition uh, is to develop a uh, business plan. Um, we needed to create a uh, creative environment uh, in order to produce these unique business concepts. And what um, our faculty advisor, Dr. Lee, had presented to us was a 3-H group dynamic. Um, what the 3-H group dynamic is, is the hipster, the hacker, and the hustler. The hipster is the creative genius of the group. And therefore, we placed the ISAT students and students of uh, creative colleges into this category. The hacker is our technical developer. And therefore, we place our engineering students into this category. The hustler is the person asking whether this product has a target market. Therefore, we place the business students into this category. Six teams were put together, and six unique business concepts were created. At the end of the fall 2017 semester, these six business concepts were presented at the, um, in front of uh, the collegiate win competition team and a select uh, group of faculty members. <coughs> uh, these six concepts were scored, and the two highest concepts would move on into phase three and be developed into uh, business uh, developed uh, in the Management 472 course. Um, the top two scoring teams were WinGen and Greenscape. Phase three was a continuation of the efforts done in the fall semester. Uh, the, uh, the required course for all CWC students was Management 472. Uh, the lectures were uh, given by Dr. Lee and they focused on business management, such as uh, marketing tactics, business modeling, financial analysis, and the economics of a, of a startup company. And the uh, semester can be broken up into essentially two different, um, two different time periods, the January through March time period and March through May. The classes done in January through March were uh, more of a crash course uh, business lectures focused and um, that were meant to enhance the uh, spring semester 3-H group work uh, that we'll get into in a second. And uh, um, March through May time period, uh, classes were dedicated toward the uh, competition deliverables specifically and finalizing them and refining it um, so that they could be prepared for judgment at the competition. Uh, so, like I stated there, uh, we did the same dynamic as the fall semester with the 3-H teams. Um, two 3-H teams were uh, chosen to uh, follow up on the WinGen concept and three using the green, uh, the green ski business concept. Um, the idea behind this was to, um, to have these teams take the, origin, the, the original WinGen and green ski documents, 
uh, deviate from them in a certain ways, keeping some of the foundational things, and uh, create um, more in-depth and uh, five new business uh, plans to be presented at the end of February, where they'll be judged by faculty, uh, just like in the fall semester, kind of that mini business contest. Um, and uh, they'll be judged on feasibility. The winner of this, con of this contest at the end of February uh, would be the, uh, the overall business plan that would be pursued for the competition. And so, after much decision and, uh, and voting, it was determined that WinGen was the most feasible, and WinGen would be later uh, renamed uh, Neighboring Winds as the final company, uh, company name. And these are the two logos. So the next few slides kind of encompass uh, the efforts that the, the deliverable teams did uh, in this, uh, near the end of the spring semester, but it, it's really an accumulation of everything from the start of the, uh, of the start of phase one. Um, so after the uh, uh, decision was made that we'd be following through with neighboring winds, uh, the business team was tasked to create a full business plan document that would be judged and um, the uh, contents of this included the company concept, market analysis, economics, management branching, operations, and financial planning. Uh, neighboring Winds it, uh, is a uh, corporation that uh, provides wind turbine, it's a, it's a wind turbine provider for residential areas. We provide 50 kilowatt and 100 kilowatt turbines. Um, the buyer is the home developer themselves, and. Uh, the consumer would be the homeowner who uses that energy in that area. Revenue is, uh, is um, brought in through the sale of the turbine from the home developer, as well as a monthly sustainability fee uh, for the uh, homeowner. <coughs> the headquarters of uh, Neighboring Winds is in Denver, Colorado, and this is for two reasons. One, the Midwest has higher uh, average, on average wind speeds than most other places in the United States. And two, um, Colorado's uh, mental model ethic of being a more go green, go clean kind of attitude, so they'd be more accepting of this business venture. Manufacturing and shipping were done uh, through outsourcing, uh, through, uh, uh, through other companies, whereas uh, consultation, installation, and maintenance were in-house. Finally, the business students uh, crunched all the numbers that it takes to uh, start up this company, put them into pro forma statements that included balance sheets, income statements, and cash flows. So the technical design team is responsible for the technical design report due to the uh, CWC competition. Um, prior to the comp prior to competition, um, it consisted of the market turbine and the test turbine. Uh, the market turbine is essentially the product that would be um, installed for, through neighboring winds. Um, this turbine was a three-blade rotor, um, direct drive, 50 or 100 kilowatt wind turbine, um, paired with a battery for off-grid capabilities. Um, we decided to get our turbines in neighboring winds through a manufacturer. So the two manufacturers that we chose, for the 100 kilowatt wind turbine, we chose the Northern Power Systems, and then for the um, 50 kilowatt, we chose Aeolus. Uh, now Will is going to talk to you a little bit about the engineering um, efforts and the test turbine specifications that went into the design report. So the 10 engineering students that are on the team uh, worked to build the test turbine as their capstone. Um, they are actually testing it right now. Um, we would have liked to bring it in to show you guys, but um, due to uh, tight scheduling in the fluids lab downstairs, uh, they ended up having to test during our presentation. Um, so we have a picture that should do just fine. Um, they utilize a three blade rotor with a 45 centimeter diameter, which is the maximum rotor diameter to fit into the wind tunnel that uh, the Department of Energy is providing in Chicago. Uh, the generator is a three phase generator with nine to 12 coil to magnet ratio. It has a passive yaw system and you guys can see the tail in the back of the turbine. Um, that redirects the turbine into the wind um, in the event that the wind direction changes. Uh, it has variable pitch blades that utilize maximum power point tracking, and it has an electrodynamic braking system that slows the turbine down in, in the case of uh, high wind speeds. So this picture right here is the first attempt at molding the stator. This is a, um, 
this is part of the generator. As you can see here, these are the 12 coils. It uses, they use 28 gauge wire. Um, the resin around, or like the, the part that's holding it all together is a fiberglass resin that they molded it in. And uh, many of these staters were made before they came to the final product. Um, over here on the right, you can see the, uh, the 3D printed blades. These blades were designed uh, in a software called Qblade, which is a free software that the engineering students use to design and simulate, um, which is pretty crucial because of the amount of time that it takes to make these blades. It takes approximately 24 hours to 3D print these blades in the 3D printing lab downstairs. And they're printed from a material called onyx, which is a nylon reinforced carbon fiber. So these blades are pretty strong. And here we have the test turbine in the wind tunnel at Virginia Tech. This was a few weeks ago. Um, we went to test at Virginia Tech because their wind tunnel is slightly larger than the one that we have uh, here at uh, JMU. So the full 45 centimeter rotor diameter could be tested here or there at Tech. Uh, the engineering students tested the cut-in speed and um, other power curves to further analyze the performance of the, the turbine. And the latest numbers that I've heard this morning from the engineering students was that the turbine is capable of producing 79 watts at 1200 RPM, which is uh, pretty competitive compared to the turbines of the past competitions. So the siding challenge, um, the siding team was responsible for determining a location for a plausible um, and feasible uh, 100 megawatt wind farm within a 100 mile radius of James Madison University. Um, after extensive research, they decided on Cal Knob, Virginia. Um, this was because of its location. It's located on a high ridge, therefore it has a really great um, wind resource and that's consistent. Um, they also were looking into that how the transmission lines had been recently installed, which made the project much more feasible. Um, another factor for Cow Knob that really made it a viable option was the uh, something that was really important to the siting team, the DOE, and the residents <coughs> of the area was that there's minimal wildlife and cultural impacts. Um, the siting team was responsible for conduct conducting outreach uh, to talk to the community about how they would feel about a 100 megawatt wind farm in their area. Um, and they they held it. They held a county officials meeting um, where they presented their idea, as well as a public forum, and um, both of which returned really, really positive reviews um, for this hypothetical 100 megawatt farm. <laughs> so as phase three uh, comes to a close, we will start preparing and uh, get ready for phase four. Uh, we will be arriving to Chicago via airline on May 7th, and we will be staying at the HI Hostel in uh, downtown Chicago. Uh, once we get there, uh, teams will start uh, preparing for their presentations and fine-tuning the uh, final deliverables for the competition. Uh, the JM2, JMU team is very excited uh, for this opportunity and uh, are ready to showcase our efforts uh, put forth in this past year. Uh, we hope that our scores uh, we receive and really reflect our efforts. And we really want to acknowledge our faculty advisors, Dr. Miles, Dr. Hall, and Dr. Lee. Uh, thank you, uh, Roger Beal, for all your expertise. Um, Thank you, Remy Pangle, for your help. And your, uh, we want to thank the uh, heads of ISAT engineering and management departments. And we also like to thank our anonymous donor and Department of Energy for financial support. And a special thank you to the Collegiate Wing Competition team for all their effort. Any yeah. questions? Yeah. This will be continued in future years, and have you left any resources for future teams? Yeah, so hopefully um, the collegiate win competition James Madison will decide to participate in it again. We are currently writing um, our capstone paper, which is essentially a documentation of everything that we have done, um, which we will leave to past or to future um, JMU students if they want to pursue this. This is competitive to get into, so a proposal is sent up by the faculty and advisors to the DOE. Um, so you have to uh, be accepted first, but we'll probably do it in the future. Following that up, do you have any, do, do any of those people who worked on it, such as the engineering team, do they have any journals? Uh, yes, so the engineering team, everybody on the engineering team, this was also their capstone. Mm -hmm. So they've been doing the same thing as us, is documenting their whole journey through this, so uh, they have document all 
this stuff. And also, um, the collegiate win competition happens every two years, but in the off year between the two competitions is just a um, just the like technical competition. So the engineering students could get invited back next year to um, retest their turbines. Because the journals, the journals include mistakes people make. Mm -hmm. Whereas a whereas a like a paper that you present just shows the successes. The mistakes are as important, or it's often more important than the successes. Yes, um, I think that's also a big thing that we'll be working on at Chicago and after Chicago to really um, leave a technical trace for anybody who would like to continue on. Um, that's definitely something really important, and definitely our jobs as PMOs. Jill, the time, I, I just add to what they said, the timing of the competition, it's biennial every other year, actually works well for us. And, and as uh, I think uh, Ryan or Will said, in the off year, in the odd numbered year, they will hold what I'd call a mini competition. And it doesn't include the business side of it so much of the siding, but it's primarily focused on the engineering. Our engineering program, all those 10 engineering students are juniors. This is the first of a two year capstone. So in, as juniors, they develop a first, let's call it a phase one prototype. They go compete it. And then they have an opportunity to further refine that and then go off to Colorado and, and, and compete it a second time, but the more refined version as seniors. And then while they're doing that, uh, the idea would be that we're starting to ramp up for the next competition the year after that, bring in a new set. What we'd like to do if we uh, do in, in, indeed in, in, um, plan to do this every other year is to bring in another batch of younger students as well so that we have kind of a smoother, more seamless transition uh, going forward. So this year we have uh, a blend of juniors and seniors and one sophomore, is that right? <laughs> uh, but we want to bring more sophomores in going forward so that we do have a smoother transition. Someone's going to have to take a leadership role in two years as we go forward <laughs> if she decides to stay involved. So there you go. Any other questions? Okay, anybody else have any questions? You're making it easy for us. <laughs> oh, Joel. <Yeah. laughs> so who developed you a very nice structure for the for the teams and for the for the scheduling of, of how you do things? Who came up with that structure? Plus four. Yeah, it was us four, and then it was also largely the whole team. We held a lot of meetings talking about how we wanted to do the team structure. Um, initially in the summer is when we really looked into how we thought this would be the best way to do to have our team, and then we brought it into the rest of the team, and there was some revisions, and we came up with the product that we have now, which is we think is working very successfully. It really was a team effort, and and an evolution. It was not something that was accomplished in a week or two, but it, it took a long time. And everybody, uh, it, it's important to have a diverse group, five majors here, because they do bring very different ideas um, for not just in terms of the deliverables, but in terms of how to manage. Yeah, pretty impressive. So I'll, well, hold on. I'll, I'll ask one more question. As, uh, <laughs> As, uh, did you have a question? No. <laughs> um, so, you know, from your all's perspective as, as having a managerial role here, what would you have done differently now that you've got the benefit of having had this experience? How would you have approached it differently if you could go back to the beginning of the academic year? I think we would, in my personal opinion, I think we would have, we did spend a lot of time on team structure, but I think we would have been more readily prepared, um, looked into more of the style we have now and presented it to the team. So we had a little less time on that and a little more available time for deliverables. Nick? Um, I would probably say uh, a little bit more uh, structured uh, communication. Um, you know, it's just like really more uh, Streamlined communication, if anything. Um, mm -hmm. But other than that, I wouldn't say anything. Well, um, I wish we could have uh, finalized the business plan a little earlier. That would have been nice um, in terms of writing the report for the Department of Energy. Um, 
to go off of that, I also think that the, de the business um, team should have worked closely with the design team um, when they started developing the business model instead of later on. So but the integration is important. The integration is important. Mm -hmm. It left, while we are still very successful, I think it left some choppiness and hard communication going off of what Nick said. I think it would have been a much better um, process if they, we, they worked closely together. Right. I, I was just exactly going to say what Nick said with the communication because we had, um, we were mostly utilizing uh, group messaging and um, there was no connect between all of them, which was besides those weekly meetings, which uh, for um, all intents and purposes did end up working, but it was, um, it was kind of hard throughout the week to uh, get everybody's you know, input on things, especially when things started really getting going in the spring semester. So maybe implement a, a full CWC team meeting mid to end week um, would be something to look into for next uh, next trial. Okay. Any other questions? Dr. Chan. How many universities are going to Chicago, and uh, what is our yeah, chance of winning. <laughs> there, are, there, are 12, there are 12 universities, including ourselves. Um, and I would like, I mean, I guess we might be a little biased, but I would like to think that we have a really decent chance. The, the um, engineering team is producing higher um, power outputs than past competitions. We put a lot of effort into our business model. The siting team has done an exemplary job. I've been, they did a wonderful job with their presentation last night. Um, and then the design report, there was a lot of integration. I, I, I like to think we do have a very good chance. To add some context to that, um, those uh, bi-monthly calls with uh, DOE, um, each team got to speak on their status. And every time, uh, you know, after every team spoke about where they're at, it seemed we were either in the middle of the pack or you know even above, um, you know in the higher portion, and then it kind of came together when we went to Virginia Tech a few weeks ago and presented the turbine, and um, some of the Virginia Tech students were there, and they were saying how it's basically we're a lot farther than they were um, in designing the turbine, so it's pretty hopeful at this point. Just so that was not your best model, right? <laughs> oh, which I mean, that's no. is it, is oh, but Virginia Tech is also a competitor. Oh, they yes. are. Yes. Yeah, Virginia Tech is. Virginia Tech. So that was joking. That was not your best model. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I can say something here. I've been keeping up with the uh, engineering part of this pretty close, especially their documentation. And their documentation, if you read it, the good the bad and the ugly. It's all there, everything. They didn't leave out anything, because I was there for most of the testing. And every little thing that went wrong, mistakes they found out, the things they've learned, it's all there. And as far as the alternator goes, the generator, I'll bet you money they go going to have the, fat, the, the most uh, powerful alternator there. It's going to output more than any other alternator of the 12 universities. <laughs> what they're working on now, not really, I ain't kidding you. But what, what they're working on now is controlling that power. The electronic guys are trying to control all that power, regulate it, maintain it at all the different wind speeds that the probably energy is going to throw at them. And that's what they're doing downstairs right now. We have a reputation to uphold. I know, we have to. Yeah, I, I we're going after Penn yeah, State. I think you're going to do well, very oh. well. Yeah. I'm sorry, Penn State has won the last two competitions. The it's only other two. The only other two. <laughs> and uh, we're coming for them. That's, that's, <laughs> that's going to end. Yeah. That's going to end. Can we club them? Well, well. <laughs>